Good morning, everybody. Let's wait for some people to get in here in this chat room or whatever, and we'll get started. Let me see if I can put some music on slowly. That would be good, right? What do you think? Good morning, Sister Pastora Margie Fabio. How's it going? Well, you know what? Who's in here? I'll leave that one in there. Good morning. How's it going, guys? Blessings to everybody. Hope you guys are ready for a great message. Um... Let me put some music slowly while we wait for some people in here. I want you guys to turn the, to Acts chapter 3, verse 6. Acts chapter 3, verse 6. While we wait for a second, while we wait for some people to get in here. Open your Bible because I want you guys to see that everything that I speak is true. Okay? Can you guys hear the music? All right, guys, I want you guys to open up to Acts chapter 3, verse 6. Right away before we get started. Um, good morning, Albert. God bless you. Uh, guys, like I said, the other day I, I refocused my, my, um, my delivery of the message. I... I went back and I thought everything over than what was being told to me. And as I said in my other videos, yes, as Christians, we can become so knowledgeable in the word that we end up being stuck up with it. We end up walking around people with our nose in the air, thinking we're too good for people. We end up building a group of people who, who agree with a certain message and we get so used to those people that when it comes time to trying to find the lost, we don't know how to deliver a message to the lost. And the main ones that we have to focus on are the lost in the world. The ones who are who were with Christ, but they backslid. Those are the ones that God put us on earth to, to reach out to. He didn't put us on this earth to be like the Pharisees, building up our own group of people so we can make each other feel good. I don't want to waste my time doing that. I mean, we still have to build up each other in the church. But our main focus is outside in the world. Amen? Can I get an amen? I want everybody to share this video. Hit share right now. There should be a little button. Hit the share. Help me reach other people out there. So again, like I said, sometimes, sometimes we lose our focus in the main purpose of... Jesus ministry we lose that focus and we become stuck up listen guys we're all supposed to be disciples it says go out there and make disciples and, and preach the word to the nations now how can how can we as Christians who already know the word and know what to do how can we go out into the world preaching to people when the world out there are babies right now I'm not saying that in a disrespectful manner, but spiritually they're babies. They either know the word, but they're not strong in the word, or they don't know the word at all. So when you have a newborn baby or even a six, seven month, eight month old baby crawling around the floor, you know, but right now they're, they're low on the floor because they cannot walk. So how can you go, and this baby's on milk, amen? How can you go, Stuff a big piece of steak into the mouth of a baby that's crawling. Is that baby going to be able to eat it? Digest it? And savor it? That baby is not going to be able to digest that food. He's going to end up choking on it. We have to focus our, our delivery. In the church, you deliver the message um, like Paul did to the churches. If you If you... I never paid attention before. When Paul wrote the letters to the churches, it's because he knew the people inside the church already knew better. And sometimes we try to take those messages of Paul out into the world where it does no good. 
because the people out in the world do not know our terms that we use, our language we use, because they're, they don't know God yet or they're not strong enough. So people take that message of Paul out to the world when that's meant for the churches of the people who already know better. Amen. So we have to carry the message, you know, give the people out in the world milk so they can grow up and get stronger. Um, if you turn to Acts chapter 3, verse 6, it does with a, uh, a lame man that was outside, uh, I, I believe, an entrance as Peter, I believe it was uh, Peter and John, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. They were walking by him and he asked them for money. And Peter responded in verse 6, I don't have silver or gold. Let me turn this off real quick. He tells them, I don't have silver or gold. But what I do have, I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Get up and walk. So, guys. Let's, let's uh, give the same message to the people. Let's tell them that we don't have the money to give them, you know. But what we do give them is far better than money. What Peter offered this man was the healing powers, the healing of Jesus. Amen. There are people out there who are hurting. So let's take the healing of Jesus out to the nations. Let's take it out to the world and offer them healing of the spiritual, spirituality of the spirituality. Let's offer them healing for their spiritual being, for their physical needs also, guys. Okay? Now listen, like I said before, we cannot deliver a message that is too hard for the people out in the world. When Jesus walked among the sinners and around the people, did, did he ever go around pointing out people's sins? He never did that. Now, we are to judge inside the church. I'm not saying we shouldn't judge. We have to make righteous judgment among our brothers in Christ. But the ones who are lost in the world, we have to deliver a more loving message. Jesus never went around to the sinners and called out their sins and pointed his finger. Just being among them, they felt his presence. And they changed after they were convicted by being around Jesus. Amen. So, we don't have to go out in the world pointing out everybody's uh, everybody's sins. We don't have to go out in the world and say, "Hey, you're drinking, you're sinning. Hey, you're uh, you're being adulterer, you're sinning." Just your presence. If you truly have the presence of Christ in you, the Spirit of Christ, just your presence around the people is going to be enough. We got to show the people we're not here to judge them. Let's offer them spiritual healing. Right now, they're like the lame man walking around. Or not being, well, the lame man couldn't walk, but you know what I mean. Right now, they're spiritually injured or hurt or spiritually crippled. We got to deliver this message of healing to them. That if they accept Jesus Christ in their life, they're fully healed spiritually. Now turn to John chapter 12, verse 45. John chapter 12, very, uh, very, sorry, Marty. John chapter 12, verse 45, guys, okay? If you guys can, whoever is joining, please hit the share button. Invite some more people. Okay, guys. Like I said, turn to John chapter 12, verse 45, guys. Again, guys, I saw the hypocrisy of many Christians. I'm not saying this to put anybody down. I'm not saying this to put anybody down, guys, but... I was within a group of people who were self-righteous. And after I was spoken to, like as a brother in Christ, I was given the, uh, the word to change my delivery. And so that's what I'm doing. We have to be more loving like Jesus. Like I said, Jesus walked around with love, compassion, love and compassion. John chapter 12, verse 45 says, the word says, and the one who sees me sees him who sent me. So Jesus was saying, the one who sees Jesus saw his Father in heaven. The one who sees me delivering this message, you're seeing Jesus. Because if we're doing the work of Jesus, we, we, are, we are in the image of God. We are created in the image of God. So the one who sees me also, like Jesus said about his Father, if you see me, then you see Jesus. 
You see God. Amen. Verse 46 now says, I have come as light into the world so that everyone who believes in me would not remain in darkness. I am here to offer you a guys the light of Christ. Those of you who are who are who are lost in the world, I'm not judging you. I'm just saying who are uh, listen to the word and who are lost. I am here offering you the light of Christ. Jesus, accepting Jesus into your life will get you out of this darkness. I cannot save you, but Jesus can. Verse 47, If anyone hears my words and doesn't keep them, I do not judge him, for I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. That's a very powerful message, guys, right there from Jesus. Did you guys catch that? Verse 47? We're on John chapter 12, verse 47, guys, if you're barely joining. Those are very powerful words by God, by Jesus. He says, if anyone hears my words and doesn't keep them, I do not judge them. For I did not come to, the, I, for I did not come to judge the world, but save the world. <laughs> guys, what, he, what Jesus was saying, as I'm delivering this message to you, if you don't keep them, I'm not going to curse you and say, well, may God throw you in hell or whatever. I'm not going to curse you. I'm not going to judge you. Because if you look at verse 47, Jesus didn't do it. And he had the power to do it. He had the, 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 the authority to say, if you don't listen to me, you know, you're going to hell. If you don't listen to me, you're going to be condemned for the rest of your life, whatever. Or you're going to be cursed. But Jesus didn't say that. He said, if anyone hears my words and don't keep them, I do not judge them. Because he didn't come to judge the world. He came to save them. In that same way, guys, if anyone doesn't listen to you, just leave them. Walk off, dust your feet, your shoulders, whatever, and walk. Okay, you already planted the seed, the word of God into them. It's up, uh, eventually they will be convicted in their own time. Maybe it will take somebody else down the line to come talk to them. But we don't, we don't sit there and judge them and curse them and condemn them to hell because they didn't want to listen. But remember, the word says if they reject you, they reject God. They're not rejecting you. They're rejecting God. But anyways, guys, Jesus says, I did not come to judge the world. Let that sit in. So why do we as Christians walk around judging the world? Why do we walk around judging the world? We have, so many of us come into that mindset, you know, of being so harsh in our delivery. Like I said, that's just like taking a piece of steak and stuffing it in a baby's mouth. <laughs> That infant is not going to be able to chew that meat. That infant is not going to chew that meat. That infant's going to choke on it because he needs milk. So I'm here to offer you guys to let you guys know if you're watching and, and you feel like you don't know God yet or you want to know God, this is the word that I'm going to give to you guys. We're not here to judge you. Okay? Look at verse 48. The one who rejects me and doesn't receive my sayings has this as his judge. The word I have spoken will judge him on the last day. For I have not spoken to my own, but the Father himself who sent me has given me a command to say everything I have said. Likewise, Jesus gives us the authority to go out into the world and preach this gospel, to preach the truth of God, to preach salvation to the people. If you reject me or in the message of God, I'm not going to sit there and judge you. But it says in the end, you will be judged it says, the one who rejects me and doesn't receive my sayings has this as his judge. Meaning, Jesus is giving you time to change your life. He's giving you a time to repent. He's not judging you right now. He's being patient with you. He's giving you that time to come to him. But he says, if you go till the end of the world or the end of your life and you don't accept these words... That these, this will be your judgment on the last day. But right now, guys, you have time to turn to Christ. Right now is that time to turn to Christ, guys. Turn to John chapter 5 now. John, John chapter 5, verse 14. John chapter 5, verse 14. Again, guys, um, if, if you're just joining in, joining in. That's like the beginning or however people said it. If you guys are just joining, uh, hit the share button. I appreciate those who have already shared it. 
um, John chapter 5, verse 14. Now this is... All right, Albert. God bless you, bro. Um, I'll be talking to you later. If anybody is out there and you don't understand any of this, you can message me. Message me. I would love to discuss this with you. Um, or you could text me at 325-829-8483. But if you go to John chapter 5, verse 14, this is after Jesus healed the man that was on the... He told him to pick up your mat and walk. He, he healed the lame man. This was Jesus. After Jesus... After this, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, See, you are well. Do not sin anymore so that something worse doesn't happen to you. Jesus was telling him that he's already healed this man uh, from not being able to walk. And something worse that Jesus is talking about is, uh, is eternal damnation. So he says, do not sin anymore, guys. So this is your day for salvation, guys. I ask that you accept Christ and do not sin anymore. Okay? So that something worse doesn't happen to you. Now turn to John chapter 5 verse 24. is right across. And my Bible is right across. But it's John chapter 5 verse 24. Guys, again. This is an offer for you guys to accept Christ in this day. This is your day for salvation, guys. This is your day to accept Christ and understand what that if you accept him, you have eternal life in the Father. Look what chapter John chapter 5, verse 24 says. Truly I tell you, anyone who hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. You guys understand that? And will not come under judgment, but has passed from death to life. John chapter 5, verse 24, amen. Again, I'll read it. Truly, I tell you, anyone who hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not come under judgment, but has passed from death to life. Guys, if you accept Jesus in this day, you will not come under judgment, guys. It says you will pass from death, which is asleep in Christ. You will be from becoming... From being asleep in Christ straight to eternal life. If you accept Jesus in this day and his word. Let that sink in guys. It says truly. Truly. I tell you anyone who hears my word and believes him who sent me. Has eternal life guys. Eternal life with Christ. And will not come under judgment but has passed from death to life. If you accept Christ. This day. You will not come under judgment like the world who doesn't accept them. And you will pass from death to life, to eternal life. Amen? Can I get an amen? Anybody agree with me? So guys, I know many of you might be having questions. But, hold on guys, let me silence this right quick because I don't want this sound to come up in the video. Come on. Hold on guys, give me one second. So you may be asking, your, like, who is able to be saved? Who, who, who gets this salvation? Guys, Jesus will forgive you of your sins. He will wipe your slate clean. No matter if you're an adulterer, no matter if you were a, whatever sins, because I don't want to begin naming sins right now. But whatever you're doing, don't let that keep you from God. Whatever your sins are, he will forgive you guys. Look at the people in the, all the men in the Bible. Okay. You have Moses. Who messed up. God chose him to lead his people out of Egypt. You have David. Who messed up in his life. God forgave him. You have, um, you have Paul. One of my favorite apostles. You have Paul who murdered Christians, who persecuted Christians, who attacked them, who slandered them. You have these men who messed up in their lives and God still chose them. He forgave them their sins. And this is your chance to accept this salvation of God. I just named a few. I just named a few people who were the worst people or some of the worst and God redeemed them. He chose them to be a tool for him. So no matter your sins, 
God, if you accept him this day, he will forgive you guys. Amen? Can I get an amen? I just named a few. There's Moses. There's um, there's David, like I said. You know, there's Paul. Just think about it, guys. Uh, do some, some studying on these people and know what their sins were, what they messed up in. And you'll see that God forgives you no matter what. If you accept them this day, the only thing that you are not forgiven is if you blaspheme the Holy Spirit, which means um, denying Jesus' works. Now turn the last two uh, chapters. John chapter 7, verse 37, guys. John chapter 7, verse 37. Again, guys, if you haven't shared this video, please share this video. It could reach some lost people out there. That is our goal, guys. We need to set our mind to reaching the lost. You still have to take care of your sheep in the church. But your message to the church is going to be different than your message to the outside world. The outside world is not going to know the things of God or they're not going to be mature in God. But the people inside the church are going to be mature and understand what you're going to say. So you cannot go around whipping the people on the outside like you would do to the inside people who know better. But on John chapter 7, verse 37, it says, On the last and most important day of the festival, Jesus stood up and cried out. He cried out, guys. It didn't say, say he yelled or anything like that, because by yelling, people think, well, he's angry. He's yelling at the people. He's angry because they didn't accept him. Jesus cried out. He had emotions. He had compassion for the people that were lost. He had love for them. So he cried out. Let the words cried out stick out in your mind. If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. The one who believes in me, as scripture has said, will have streams of living water flow from deep within him, guys. Jesus cried out. If anyone is thirsty, if you are thirsty, guys, Come to him and he will give you to drink. Okay? This flowing water is the symbolistic of being a symbol of the Holy Spirit. He will give you the Holy Spirit who will fulfill you in everything. Okay? If you are thirsty for truth and for a righteous life and and a better life, come to Jesus and he will give it to you. But let that word stick out to you guys. He cried out. He didn't yell. He didn't scream. He cried out, which shows that he had love and compassion. Go to John chapter four, 14. John chapter 14, verse 6. John chapter 14, verse 6, guys. This is going to show you how you can uh, have eternal life in God. How to get to God. John chapter 14, verse 6. Jesus told him, I am, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will also know my Father. From now on, you do know him and have seen him, guys. Don't listen to others who say we can choose our own path to heaven. There's no other path to heaven, guys, but just through the, the, the truth, the life, and that is Jesus Christ. So if you hear anybody else preaching that you can find your way to heaven uh, through a different path, do not believe it because it tells you in John chapter 14, verse 6, the only way to heaven and to the Father is through Jesus Christ himself, who is the life. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, guys. So I want to end this little teaching, sermon, whatever you want to call it, in saying, guys, if you're out there in the world and you don't know how to, to find God or anything, uh, go over this video again, look at the verses, and, it, and this will teach you guys. We're not here to judge the outside world. I'm offering you guys this day to, to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, to move from death to eternal life, guys. Remember what it says. Um, let me go back to that verse right quick, guys.
Let me go back to that verse to, to re-highlight it again. Again, like Jesus said, he has come as light into the world so that everyone who believes in me will not remain in darkness. If you don't want to keep these words that I spoke in authority from God, then that's on you. I'm not going to judge you. I'm not going to condemn you. Nobody should condemn you if you don't want to accept these words and keep them. But these words are there for you to accept and acknowledge and accept the, as Jesus as your Savior. Because these words will also judge you in the very end when God comes for his people. Okay? Just read that chapter, John chapter 12, verse 45 through 49. But anyways, um, if you guys want to know what I was talking on, the first one was Acts chapter 3, verse 6. John chapter 12, verse 45 through 49. John chapter 5, verse 14. And John chapter 5, verse 24, guys. So again, guys, don't think that you're too far gone, that you're too much of a sinner for God to accept you. Look at the people, that the men and women in the Bible who were sinners and God cleansed them. He accepted them and he allowed them to become his disciples. He allowed them to become his tools to spread the gospel, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you're out there and you have questions, you still have any questions, message me. I'm open to, to, uh, to questions or discussions. Um, you can also add me on Facebook too. Um, send me a friend request. You can also text me at 325-829-8483, guys. Remember, guys, yes, Abel, amen. For those of you who know the word, reconsider your delivery. If you're delivering, if you want to save the help uh, reach the lost, reconsider your delivery to the lost. Do not throw steak at them when they're still on milk or they're newborn. You have to give them milk until they mature. Okay, now if your delivery is for the church, if you want to have help these people remain in, in the truth, then you have to have a different delivery for the church. Paul's letters were to the churches, I believe, and many people, many people uh, try to deliver the church's letters to the outside, and that's not how it's supposed to work, guys. But yes, like Abel said, God doesn't condone sin, but he doesn't condemn them. You still have time to turn your life to God and accept him as the light, the truth, and the, and the eternal life, and your Savior. Okay, guys, I got to go. Be sure you share this video if you haven't already. Um, God bless you guys. Have a wonderful Friday. Allow this message to, to, uh, to resonate within you. Meditate on it. See you guys. I'll probably come back Monday or so with another video. God bless.